Good afternoon. Just getting set up here on my computer. I hope everybody's having a good Thursday. I can't believe it's Thursday already. That's crazy. <clears throat> Just give a few minutes for people to join in if they're able to. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know that Christical mentioned that she would be joining us in the comment section today too. So that will be lovely to have her. I'm just getting my computer set up on the side. And today we are gonna be talking about our Schmeltit products, which is um, Ugly Duckling's rendition of a blooming gel. So it's a fun product to have on hand um, to create some fun and fast uh, different nail art designs and techniques. Today I'm gonna to be using um, our beautiful crystal tip display. I'm using our, pardon me, <clears throat> our crystal um, <laughs> our crystal tip display, our tippies in tapered square, and this is a size two, I believe. We've got my trusty crystal palette, and then this beautiful color here, hopefully you guys can see on camera, is number 143, <clears throat> I'm so sorry, number 143 gel polish. It's this beautiful, deep maroon, wine color. This is one of my go-tos, and I know my Auntie Joanne loves this one, too. She wears this one quite a bit. Quack, quack. Hi, Erin. Hi, Jade. So we're using today, um, I've gone ahead and I've put a base, one base coat and cured of number 44 gel polish, which is our beautiful stark white gel polish. Fully cured that in our lamp for 60 seconds. Now I'm going to go in and using our Schmelt It White. Now before I get too ahead of myself, we have Schmelt It in three different colors. Well, two colors and uh, clear. So we have um, black, which I don't have on me. Um, I left mine at home, but I'm just gonna be using our white today anyway. So we have black, we have Schmelt It White, and then we also have Schmelt It Clear. So they all, um, Schmelt It White and Schmelt It Black uh, are similar. It's just that they're obviously white and black. And then Schmelt It Clear is clear and it's designed to be used over different base colors. So the thing to think of when you use Schmelt It is basically, depending on the design you do, the color of Schmelt It that you use will be the outline for your design. So if I use white, then the outline of my roses, like we'll be doing today, will be white. If I use black, they'll be black. And then if you use clear, it will be whatever the base color that you use is. So you guys will see uh, once I get started here. We are gonna be doing some roses just to get ourselves in the loving mood for Valentine's Day, which is fast approaching. Um, and I'm gonna be using number 143 gel polish, but as we paint each rose, we're actually going to be making the shade lighter. So our roses will end up being ombre. We'll have darker roses at the cuticle area, and then as we work up to the free edge, they'll become lighter in, um, in the shade. So using just one shade and then our number 44 gel polish will create these ombre roses. One thing to remember when you're using Schmelt It, a couple of things actually, is that it's used, um, it's best used with our gel polish. Um, anything like our color gel or our art gel, they have too thick of a viscosity to properly melt or schmelt <laughs> in with the Schmelt It gel. So using a gel polish will give you the best results. Um, however much schmelt it you apply on the nail will also result in how quickly things melt um, as well in combination with how much gel polish you apply. So it does take a bit of practice to kind of get used to um, when you're painting things. Um, typically you'll see a lot of people um, apply their schmelt it over the entire nail and then do one big flower, which is beautiful. For me, I find, um, and what we're gonna do today is I like to apply it in little areas and work in little areas just so I can get more definition because the longer that your design sits on the nail in the uncured schmelt it, the more it will schmelt and then more it will disperse and the more it will kind of create that watercolor effect. So if you want it to um, be more defined, then try, if you're able to, if your design allows, work in smaller areas. Oh, we've got a whole bunch of friends here today. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Frida. Hi, everyone. Thanks for hopping on. 
Okay, so let's go ahead. I've Like I've said, I've applied one coat of number 44 gel polish. It's our stark white. I've done a full cure of 60 seconds in our LED lamp. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take our white schmelted, which comes in the pot. So does our black. Our clear comes in a polish bottle because the viscosities between the black and white and the clear are a bit different. The clear um, is a bit thinner in viscosity and it applies nicer in a gel polish form. The white and the black are a bit thicker in viscosity and apply nicely with a gel brush. Okay. So I've got, oops, I tilted my schmelted on the side. Don't mind my little drip there. We've got our white schmelted. So now I've got a little bit on my gel brush. I'm using my um, Ugly Duckling gel brush. And I've got a bit of the schmelted on my brush here and I'm gonna start working in this top right corner. That's just out of habit, no particular reason why. So we're going to um, think of the overall shape of the rose. You, if you want your rose um, to be very um, smooth, then you would just do kind of like a half circle. And this is the area that you would paint in. But for me, I want the outer um, petals of the roses to be a little bit more um, uh, organic and natural so what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll kind of just wiggle the outer edge so it's not a perfectly smooth half circle and that way wherever I put the gel or the schmelted gel is only how do I say this <laughs> I'm confusing myself I'm sorry wherever you put the schmelted gel down the gel polish will only melt out that far so even though we're working on a cured nail with gel polish Wherever I'm adding that uh, wet schmelt it, that will be the border to which the gel polish melts to. And you guys will see as soon as I get on the nail here. Okay. Alrighty, so like I said, I've got my gel brush, I've got my white schmelt it, and we are gonna go ahead, starting up in this top right corner. And if you guys, Help me out here if it gets blurry or if uh, you need better lighting or anything, just let me know. Maybe I'll drop the beautiful crystal, unfortunately, because I can see it kind of trying to focus. But if I go out of focus or out of frame, just give me a holler in the comment section. Okay, so we're starting up at the top right corner here. I'm just applying some of my schmelt it. And of course, if I was working on a client, as you can see, it's very easy to, if you're using a bigger brush in a tighter area, it's easy to get product on the skin. So we want to avoid that. So if I'm working on a client, I would most definitely probably use either my painter brush or my detailer tool or detailer brush to get in here. And then as I'm working outwards on the nail, I would switch back to my gel brush. So let's go ahead and let's just create kind of a rough three quarters of a circle-ish. Now I know working white on white is a bit hard to see. I hope it's picking up a little bit on the camera. But you guys will see once we start now, I'm switching to my Detailer 2 brush. We've got our just number 143. We haven't mixed any other um, white in there yet because I want to use this as my darkest shade. So I'm picking up a bit of product on the brush. There's barely anything on that brush because I want it to really kind of disperse. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to start with the inside of my rose. Let me just put this down and let me grab some white. So roses can be kind of tricky to paint and I still have issues with making things look exactly like a rose. So these will look floral-esque, <laughs> rose-esque. So let me go ahead, I'm going to pick up some of my white here and just show you on my palette over my black glove. So what I like to do is I start from the inside and I work my way out. So put my brush down and I kind of create almost a little comma or like a shrimp. Then as we work our way out the petals will become a little bit thicker and I always start the second petal where the first one is opened. So the middle of the second petal will meet be right in the middle of where the first one is open. It kind of um, is a bit different when you're working from the first couple petals because this one will be thicker here and then it'll overlap a little bit where the last one ended and then you can pull it over and then you just keep going around and around and around in that same format and you can see my lines are not completely smooth this is just how I like to do my flowers um, some people like the petals completely smooth and they'll just go like this so it's really smooth I like that little bit of 
irregularity in my petals. So I think it makes it look a little bit more realistic. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna hop onto our nail and we're gonna continue that with our number 30, or sorry, 143 gel polish. So starting in the middle, I'm just loading my brush up a little bit here. Starting in the middle, we're gonna put that center little comma or little prawn down. And you do have to move a little bit quick just so you can get your petals down. And as you can see, it's starting to spread already. Just apply those petals and the schmelt it does the work for you. So it creates that ombre effect. So your petals will be kind of darker um, in the middle and then as they fade out. But you'll notice that the schmelt it avoids or keeps your um, petals and your design from actually touching each other. Unless you physically touch your, um, your design pieces with the brush, they won't touch. So this is what I mean by the outline of your design will be the color of schmelt it that you use. Pull that. And I don't have a lot of schmelt it here, so I'm not going to add any gel polish on this side um, because it's not really going to melt. So we'll just pull that down a little bit. You could probably even pull this down a tiny bit and just let it melt down more. So we've got our first rose done. How easy does that look, you guys? Pretty stinking easy, hey? And that's all because of schmelt it. Now here you'll notice, here it's spread a lot because this is where we started. Here you'll notice it's a bit heavier. A, because I used quite a bit of gel polish here and B, probably because this, well, I know, <laughs> because this is the last area that I put down. So the longer you let it sit on the nail, the more it'll spread. I am gonna stop talking and I'm gonna get this in the lamp and we're gonna cure that. Cure that and then we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna start mixing our next shade. So while that's curing, I'm gonna mix the next shade. Oh, Christical, yes! I am hosting my first online class um, brought to everyone by Ugly Duckling Nails, of course. I am gonna be hosting my first online class on March the 1st for anyone that's interested. It's going to be an online floral and lace class. So it's six hours online. And the neat thing is, because it's an online class, you'll actually have access to the class for uh, two weeks after the live class, or two or, two or three, I can't remember. Um, it'll be available till March 22nd, I believe. So you have a couple weeks, even if you can't make the live class, the live class will be posted right after it's done and you can join in and you can follow along. Um, there's more details on our website. Christical posted the link in the comment section if you're interested. So I've moved some of my number 143 over to the side here. I'm just going to mix in a little bit of white. And we're going to lighten that up slightly. Maybe a little too much, so I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my 143. And we're just going to keep adding to this pile. Every time I do a new flower, a new rose, I'll add a little bit of white and it'll make it slightly lighter. And that way we work, when we work down the nail, the flowers will become lighter also. So I've got a good cure on that. So now I'm going to go back in. We are going to use our clear, or sorry, our white schmelted again. Grabbing a little bit from my pot here. Okay, now we're going to focus up here. So you know what? I am even going to, let's see. I may even come over slightly over that petal. And this flower may be even a little bit bigger. I like to do them in varying sizes. That way they're not all itty bitty. Making that three quarters of a circle or half circle. We've got our schmelted on there. I think you guys can see it a little bit better this time. I put it on a little bit thicker. And we're gonna go back in now. Um, yes, I'm using my Detailer 2 brush. And for those of you who have been around here for a while, you know that this is my absolute favorite. So I'm going to pick up a bit of that lighter shade of 143 that we mix, that custom shade. We're going to start in our center and just start laying down our petals. That was quite a bit of gel polish. That's okay. Got a little heavy handed, so I might use a little bit less on some of the other ones here. But you can see it really start to disperse that color and spread that color out. Okay. 
Okay. It's a beautiful thing. And um, Schmeltit can be used for a whole bunch of different designs. Um, I've used it to create uh, tie-dye nails. I've used it to create kind of like Aztec looking nails with different blocks of color. Um, it's a very versatile product. It's awesome, awesome, awesome for marble nails. Marble nails with Schmelted is a breeze. So if marble is something that you are not super comfortable with, um, I suggest using some Schmelted and giving it a go. So we've got that flower overlapping there. Let's go ahead, pop that in the lamp for a cure. We're gonna be moving back and forth a little bit quick now. The thing about Schmelted, like I said, you guys, is the longer it sits on the nail, the more it will disperse, the more it will self-level and your design will spread. So for me, I like working in smaller areas, unless, of course, I'm gonna want to do a whole nail. Then you gotta work speedy, you gotta work quick. Um, otherwise, it'll disperse quite a bit. But it is a really, really fun product to play with. Frida, Schmelted is absolutely fabulous. It is, it's such a cool product. And you know what? Sadly, admittedly, I don't reach for it as much as I should. And whenever I play with it, I'm like, oh man, this stuff is so fun. Um, I'll show you, I was just playing before I came on, I'll show you a design I was kind of playing with, but I wanted to go with flowers because of Valentine's Day coming. Okay, so same step as before, grabbing some of my Schmelted. Let's do another one here. This would look beautiful with the black as well if you want a really deep, rich look. I like how you do it in sections. Smart idea makes sense to keep roses looking consistent and not some exactly good point, Christical. Like Christical said, if I were to try and do all the roses at once, the first one I did up here, by the time I got down to the free edge, this one would be so faded out and so dispersed. And these ones would be really, really defined because this one would be sitting on the nail longest. So by doing it in sections, it gives me more control and my roses will end up looking a bit more defined. You can see here though, I went crazy and picked up a really large bead of gel polish and plopped it down in the Schmeltit and it faded out really, really fast. So. I think to have a bit more control, using a bit less on the brush is key. So let's go ahead, let's mix our next shade. Just mixing some white in with our number 143 mixture here. Okay. Okay, so I'm picking up my brush, or <laughs> I'm picking up my product on my brush. Let's go ahead, let's start with that center little prawn. Pop that down. <laughs> and spread those petals around. Petal, petal, petal. Hey, this is the first video back since the new year. So happy new year, everybody. I hope your 2022 is going well so far. It's nice to be back, spending time with all my nail friends. Oops. It's a bit big. You can really see this one spreading. It's really pretty. I think. <laughs> so of course, if you're offering this service to your clients, allow for a bit extra time because it will take a bit of time, especially if you're doing it section by section. If you feel brave and you want to do it all at once, by all means, go right ahead. But this is just how I personally like to do it. Okay, I'll let that sit just for a second, see if this one will spread a little bit more, but I think it's probably good. So let's pop that in there. And I gotta look at my, um, my uh, composition because right now I'm very much going one on this side and one on this side, either side of the nail. I want it to look like it's scattered all the way down. So once this has a second to cure, we'll take a peek together and see what it's looking like. Yeah, you definitely don't have to work as quickly, which is nice. Because honestly, sometimes it gives me a bit of anxiety when I'm trying to do um, like a full flower nail. And I'm like, oh gosh, the middle's spreading so quickly and the outside petals, oh my gosh. But 
like I said, it takes some playing and getting used to, but this is such a fun product. I can't say it enough. Okay. Let's go back. So we can see here about what I'm saying about composition. These two are very much on. I, I want to kind of maybe put a smaller one here and then maybe a larger one here and a smaller one here. So let's go ahead. Well, you know what? Mm, no. We'll go ahead and do what I was going to say. Or, oh my goodness. <laughs> do Oh my gosh, I can't find my words, you guys. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna add a small one here, just slightly overlapping. This is gonna be more kind of, of a whole flower, pretty much. Whole little guy there. And then on this side, we're gonna do like a big, like quarter of a rose so that way they almost get bigger in size as they're coming down too so this one is a little bit smaller a little bit bigger a little bit bigger this one will just be like a filler and then we're gonna do a big guy here so bringing over my palette my trusty crystal palette i've got one number number 143 there i'm adding some more of our number 44 to lighten that shade so i'm just working from the same pile each time and i'm not having to mix separate piles Okay, wipe off the excess from my brush. Let's go ahead, now I'm working with less product. Let's go ahead now, jump into that center. And it's so neat how it just acts as that outline for your design and helps, I mean, it does the work, like it helps with the shading and everything. This is such a, a cool product for those that may not feel as confident in hand painting or design work because you can really wow your clients with a, with a um, product like this. Even if you just lay down different colors in, um, in different like circles, different size circles and stuff and just let it melt, clients love that kind of stuff and it looks really cool. Um, like I said, it's awesome for uh, marble work also. I use it quite a bit when um, my clients want marble because again, it works for you. It does the work for you. Oh, we got a little section here. Let's add a little, little guy tucked behind that big one. Here we go. Okay, let me just bring this over slightly, slightly up here. All right, let's go ahead, let's pop that in. Do a little mixy roo I'm just going to put a little bit more number 44 on my palette here, 44 gel polish. Now, for those of you who may have been joining in late, we're using um, Schmelt It today and our gel polish, our Ugly Duckling gel polish. It's key to use gel polish um, in my experience, and um, we suggest using gel polish because of the viscosity. Although our gel polish is amazing, it has great coverage, the pigment is incredible, it is thinner in viscosity than our, our color gel or our art gel. Um, it's not thin, but it's thinner, so it will work a lot better with the schmelted and um, it'll melt better for you than a gel with thicker viscosity. That's in my personal um, experience and what we kind of suggest, but if you've tried it with a color gel and you've had great success, please let me know because that would just even open up the door even more for more great colors to use. Okay. Mm. All right, let's go ahead and let's do that big flower, like I said, just to hopefully break it up a little bit. So we're going to overlap these other ones a bit. Whoops. We're going for a big guy here. Or a big woman. Big, lady, big one. Big. I was about to say big leaf, but big petal. A big flower. My words are not with me today. All right, oh, got a little speck there. Let's get that out. Alrighty. Now, got our last custom shade. I'm going to pretend that the middle of the rose is around here. So I'm making it bigger because this is a bigger flower. Okay, 
that around. Using the very tip of my brush to kind of pull that product to a point around the center of the flower. And because we're working larger, we're working with more products, so I am going to move a little bit quicker. Just so that everything kind of melts evenly-ish. Even-ish. <laughs> Some of the schmelt it gets in there, that's okay. It just adds more, more texture. Okay. Get a really big petal as we work outward. The petals are getting larger. <clears throat> Put some schmelt it here, so let's pull that around. And I got a little, do I have schmelt it here? I do a little bit. Let's just pull that. All right, we got that big rose down there. Let's go ahead, pop that in the lamp for a cure. Oh, Anya, hi, Anya. Honestly, Christina, crystal mixing custom colors is so easy, and it, it sounds silly when I say it out loud, but it is. Like, we have such a huge collection of, of gel polish colors and color gels and art gels that realistically, the color combinations you can create are endless, and um, even just this amount of shades we got, we got five, five different shades, six different shades, just from two colors of gel polish. We used 143, this beautiful kind of maroony wine shade, and then our pure white, which is number 44, and we got five different shades just out of two colors. So imagine what you can do with all of the colors that we have in our line. Really, possibilities are endless. My artistic mind is going crazy. <laughs> Feels good to be creating again, for sure. Okay. Oh, look, it's so fun. Now, if you wanted to get fancy pants, you could kind of add something up here, but you know what? Let's maybe put a little bit of bling on. There's always time for bling. Getting some schmelted at a girl, Callie. Hi, Beverly. Even-ish, I love it. <laughs> you know how we make up words, Christical. Christical and I have our own language, and we always understand each other. And people here at the office just look at us like we're crazy. But we appreciate each other's um, eccentricities, so it works. Thank goodness to have... It's good to have a friend like that in your life, for sure. I'm just grabbing some of my um, Clear as Mud crystals and my caviar. So we've got our rose nail here and you can do this of course in any shade you could do it from um, black to gray you could do it like pink red um, really like I said any colors let's go ahead and we're going to add some crystals just at the cuff there at the cuticle area I'm just grabbing them um, should we do a mix let's do a mix of some crystal and then some white opal because white opal is one of my faves. Look at how pretty these clear as mud crystals are, you guys. They're so sparkly. I'm just looking in my little my little case here. What sizes I brought. I didn't bring them all because we have so many. These are SS12s, white opal. Oh, they're so pretty. I don't know if the white opal is picking up on the camera, but I'm, let me tell you, they are something. We'll do some crystal. I have something to admit to you. Is schmelt it the same as blooming gel? Yes. So schmelt it is just our fancy word for blooming gel. Our schmelt it is our rendition of blooming gel. And it's available in clear, black, and white. And um, Claudiana, I don't know if you were here earlier, but, oh, that's a lot. <laughs> but I mentioned that our... Um, Schmelted is available in black, white, and clear, and uh, the clear comes in a gel polish bottle form because it is thinner in viscosity than the black and white. The black and white come in our little jars like this. Okay, I'm grabbing my Stickit. Crystal, I have now started a collection of whenever I um, dump out my crystals when I'm working at home or even here, <laughs> uh, 
I now just have a container on my desk of all mixed shapes, sizes, and colors. I'm taking after Crystal Cole herself. She does this, and I gave her such a hard time for it before. I'm guessing mixing or bling. I am. <laughs> I gave you such a hard time. Oh. Anya, yes, you can make beautiful, beautiful marble with stick it or schmelt it. <laughs> so I've got my stick it here, and you'll notice that it's nice and clear for what you can see in the camera. This time of year, you guys, schmelt it. Or, oh my goodness, schmelt it, stick it. I'm saying the wrong things. Stick it, much like the rest of us, does not like the cold. So if by chance you go to use your schmelt it, sorry, your stick it, or you buy a new stick it and it arrives to you and it's got a cloudy, thick, clumpy, grainy consistency, don't worry, it's just because it's cold. All you need to do is just pop the lid on nice and tight, pre boil um, your kettle with some hot water. And then pop your sealed um, container of stick it in a mug with the hot water. Let it soak for about five to ten minutes, depending on how cold it is. And then it'll be right back to this awesome clear gel consistency. So the clear is best for making roses, also making marble. Honestly, Deborah, you can use um, you can use any of them. I used the white today. As my base, I did one coat of white gel polish as my base. Then I used um, white schmaltet um, to create the roses. But you can use clear. Clear is great if you want to work over different color backgrounds. Say I was doing, I don't know, an ocean theme nail and I wanted to work over a blue. I wanted this as my background color and my outline color, my design. Then I would do my base color here and then I would go in with clear schmaltet and then create my design with the clear schmaltet. Black and white are just standard staple colors, so we offer the schmelt it in black and white um, if you want to just stick with something simple like that. Or the clear is very versatile. It's great for layering if you're wanting to do marble, etc. You find white the best for roses and clear the best for marble. Awesome, Anya. Thank you. Anya um, uses uh, Ugly Duckling and she uses schmelt it quite a bit. She's very, very talented. So. I 100% agree with you, Anya. White is best for roses, clear is best for marble. I do personally find it clear because it is thinner viscosity. Things will um, schmelt and self-level a little bit quicker. So just keep that in mind. And like I said, play with the product and see how you like it. You put your heat, your stick it on the heat radiator in your studio to make it clear again. <laughs> hey, whatever works, Frida. That's awesome. <laughs> Okay, so I've got my blinger. Let's just, oh, and I've got my Clearest Mod um, caviar beads too, which are new to our crystal line. So I've got them in silver today. I'm just going to keep them over to the side because I am very clumsy and most likely will knock them over. So if they're off to the side, that's out of the way and less chance I'll make a mess. <laughs> so I'm using the dotting end dotting tool end of my blinger, and I'm just going to place some stick it down roughly where I want my crystals. Not too much, not too little. If you're losing crystals, <clears throat> and Crystal Cool the Bling Queen in the comment section, I'm sure will back me up. Nine times out of 10, you're either not putting enough stick it on, or you're not curing it long enough. So if you are um, applying stick it a little bit thicker, you want to cure it maybe a little bit longer. We do say a minute in our LED light, but I always cure it a little bit longer just to be safe. And you also want to make sure that when you apply your crystal, um, sorry, when I pick it up, just so anybody who's never used our crystal, um, our blinger tool before, you don't have to press really hard. You literally just tap the crystal and it picks up. When I place it on the nail in the stick it, I place it down and then I gently kind of apply a bit of pressure and wiggle it and that will help that bit of stick it come up and just gently around the um, bottom rim of the crystal so it'll hug it in place and act like an anchor for it. I'm just scrolling down here. Okay. Now I'm gonna grab, I don't think I grabbed enough sizes of bling, okay. So this is an SS12 white opal crystal from Ugly Duckling. I'm also going to be using um, some SS8. And I believe these are SS3. They may be mixed, so 
but we're working down in size. So I'm just adding two on either side, so an SS8, the side the 12, and these are crystal, and then an SS3. I think these actually might not be three. I think I got them mixed up, but either way, they're a little bit smaller. Okay, and then I flip the nail, make sure we're a bit centered. Now before I cure, I'm gonna come in with our caviar, and we're gonna add some caviar in those open sections. So just using whatever product was on my um, dotting tool end of my blinger, I'm picking up those caviar beads, I'm picking up a few at a time, placing those on. If I were working on a client, I may even add the caviar before I add the bling around the um, cuticle area just to avoid touching their skin with um, any product that's on the dotting tool. We want to avoid contact with the client's skin as much as possible, and this will help avoid any risk of um, overexposure or um, allergy development. I'm going to flip it over here. These caviar beads, I have to tell you, have changed the crystal game. They just totally finish off a crystal design. I mean, before we were just throwing on, like, honestly, we've been, Christina and I, Christical, oh my gosh, Christical and I have been doing nails for what, 13 years, 14 years, Christical, 14 years, 14 years, I think. And we were laughing the other day because like getting one crystal on your nail back in the day when we first started doing nails was like, whoa crazy but now and it would be one size of crystal and then we'd adventure and we'd kind of maybe get two or three but they'd either all be the same size um and just it didn't look right but now we have all these different sizes and the caviar beads just to really finish everything off it, it looks much better in my opinion I'm just adding three on this big crystal here just to kind of finish it off And I even do this with my clients. I'll flip them around just to make sure everything is as, as centered as possible. The beautiful thing about working with Stick It is that you can move stuff around until you are happy with it. So it won't set until you pop it in the lamp for a cure, which is wonderful. The struggle is real when you try and use regular nail glue sometimes for crystals because if they fall in one spot, you don't want them there they're there so be happy with where they land <laughs> but with stick it you have that um, movability which is nice okay let's go ahead let's pop this in the lamp for a cure use these glue but the bling would run and move or apply yes exactly or apply oh my goodness i just saw your comment we've been doing nails for 15 years <gasps> what i feel very very mm -mm. Ex ex old. <laughs> I was going to say experienced, but this is a nice way of saying old. I feel old. That's crazy. Okay, I'm going to scoot these to the side to put in my crystal container later. I could have de definitely separated those ones, but that's okay. Okay, now... Let me show you guys. I didn't actually seal this one because I was just playing around, but... You can create really like different um, designs with the schmelt that you can create kind of a wave. So this would be nice for like a mermaid set or something like that. And that's just using a marbling technique in the um, schmelt it. Um, you can do marbling. Like I said, that if you Google um, blooming gel nail art ideas, there are thousands of them on Pinterest. Um, and there are so many talented artists out there that think of creative ways to use these type of products. So um, don't be afraid to ever look for inspiration, but if you recreate, please always give credit. While I say that this design was actually inspired by, I have her Instagram here, um, inspo by nails on Instagram. She did a wave, um, using, a, a different type of schmelt it. And so I was inspired to try it. So this is inspired by inspo by nails on Instagram. Okay, we've got a good cure on that now. Let's go ahead and we are going to seal this with, um, you guys decide, matte or no white. Per usual, I'm going to let you guys decide, matte or no white. 
I'll wait for you to answer here. I'm going to go grab a mat just in case that's what you say. I'm not trying to sway you. <laughs> Whatever you decide is fine. Frida says Matt. Claudiana says Matt. Deborah says Matt. Okay, we're going with Matt. Three is all it took. <laughs> Four, Aunt Anya says Matt. Good tip for your mat, you guys. Our, I'm going to bra humbly brag a little bit here. Our mat has won multiple awards because it's so be beautiful. It goes on wonderfully, it cures wonderfully, and it stays matte. Um, if you find that your ugly duckling mat is not as matte as it normally is, it's just one thing that you need to do, one simple thing. Flip the bottle upside down and give it a good shake and a good roll in between your hands. What happens over time, and it's not limited to our, I'm just gonna shake this off camera. It's not limited to, to, to just our matte. Matte um, top coats have a pigment in them that help make them matte. Over time, if you don't use that bottle, um, even over a couple days, the matte pigment can start to settle in the bottom of the bottle. So what happens is, is the matte pigment that makes it matte is down at the bottom of the bottle, and some is still dispersed through the gel, but not as much as it should be. So you're using the gel that has just a bit of that matte pigment in there, and you're getting kind of a satin finish. All you need to do, flip the bottle over, give it a really good shake, or if you have uh, our duck paddle, you can use the spatula tool end of the duck paddle. Give it a good mix inside the bottle, and that will bring your matte back to its beautiful matte finish. If you notice also that you're at the bottom of your mat um, and it's becoming clumpy or kind of goopy and thick, probably what's happened is it hasn't been um, stirred enough over its use, over its life. And what happens is you use up that gel and then the pigment stays at the bottom. So when you get to the bottom of the bottle, it's become thicker because it's mostly pigment and not as much gel. The ratio is off. So it's very important just to make sure every time you go or every couple of times you go to use your mat, just give it a good shake upside down and um, you should have no problems. Okay, so I'm going up close to that bling and those um, caviar beads, but not going over. And then I'm going to take my dotting or my detailer brush after. And I'm going to, if I was doing this on a client, I would definitely go back and use no wipe and go over the beads um, just to seal those in extra insurance. If you guys notice, um, and I've mentioned this before for those that have come and hung out before, um, if, you, if you're doing a design, and this one is a little bit raised in some areas just because we did do slight layering, what you can do before you apply your mat or your no wipe or whatever, um, top coat you decide to use is you can actually put a layer of tacky top on cure that and then go back and seal your nail and the tacky top will act kind of as like a filler layer and will help fill in any um, dips or um, little grooves or anything that you've made just by painting your design so I've got a little bit of matte on my brush on my detailer brush my detailer too and I'm just going around so I can get close to those crystals but making sure I'm not going over top of them we don't want to dull their shine They've got such beautiful facets and they're so sparkly, but we want to make sure the nail is matte up to those crystals. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pop this in a lamp for a cure. And then I would go back and I would put a little bit of no wipe um, just over the, the caviar beads. So let's go ahead, pop that in. And like um, our gel polishes, there's, it's a 60 second cure. So just to recap, for those of you that are still hanging out today, in today's video, today's demo, we used number 143 gel polish, which is this beautiful wine kind of red maroon. I used number 44 gel polish, which is our stark white. I used my Schmelted White, my gel brush, my Detailer 2 brush, and then I use some beautiful clear as mud crystals in conjunction with my blinger tool and our stick it stick it is a must-have in my opinion for sure 
and our mat, of course. Okay, I'm just going to grab a piece of paper towel here so I can wipe our nail down. Using a bit of our gel cleanse. We're almost there. Okay, let's give this a wipe. So, um, whenever you're using any of our top coats that need a cleanse, which is our matte and our tacky top, let it cool for about mm, 15 to 20 seconds um, after it comes out of the lamp, and that will ensure that you get the matte, a nice solid matte finish. Or if you're using our tacky top, it'll ensure that you get that really nice high shine gloss. So I'm just letting this cure for a sec. I've got some gel cleanse on a wipe here, and I'm just pulling down away from the client's sidewalls and skin. We don't want to scrub because scrubbing the nail like that would actually transfer the inhibition layer from the cured gel to the surrounding tissue. It's just little things like that that we have to try and remember when we're working on our lovely clients just to keep them safe. And well, there we go. We've got an ombre rose nail, perfect for Valentine's Day coming up or any time really, complete with a crystal cuff of Claire's Mud Crystals. I hope you guys had fun today. Thank you so much for hanging out. I missed you guys over the holidays. And um, if you have any questions, as always, please feel free to reach out to us. We're always available by email, uh, contact at uglyducklingnails.com. And we're here in the office Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, I, yeah, I'm oh, sorry. I was just looking in the comment section to make sure I didn't forget anything. Um, but I think that's it. So thanks again, you guys, for hanging out. I appreciate all of you so much. Happy 2022. I hope this year has wonderful things in store for you, and I hope it started off well. And I will see, oh, gel cleanse. Is this a cleaner gray bottle or just alcohol cleaner, black bottle? Okay, so gel cleanse is meant for removing the inhibition layer. So that's in the um, silver gray bottle. And the um, prep, comes in a black gel polish bottle, and that's meant for um, dehydrating the natural nail before uh, product application. So thanks again, you guys. And as always, um, we appreciate you and your support, and we will see you next week. Take care. Bye.